So in this video, I'm gonna go over the Kodak Reels 8mm to Super 8 film digitized converter. I spent the last few months converting more than 100 reels of film uh, on this device. And should you wanna do a conversion of your film, this might be the way to do it. I'm gonna share with you all the great points about this device, all the things that I have found about it from both good to bad, so that you know what to expect when you are gonna go digitize your film. If you've not already seen my other videos where I've shared thoughts on the many different ways of converting 8mm and Super 8 film into digital, well, I'll put a link up here for you or down in the description. So you know, I am not sponsored by any company or vendor I talk about here. I'm giving you all my true opinions and results as I experience them. But before we get into digitizing our memories, if you could support my channel by giving me a subscribe and pressing that like button, it'd be much appreciative. Also, YouTube's algorithm will also appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below as I've really been enjoying the feedback that you've all been providing to me as it helps me improve everything that I do. Thank you as always and let's get into it. To set the stage, I've been looking for the best ways to digitize my home movies into digital form, and I came across this device here. I actually started with the $280 Wolverine standard converter, but to be honest with you, I ran into issues as I did not realize that the Wolverine has a standard and a pro version. The standard is what I started with, and it only supports three inches and five inch rolls, but uh, I've got a whole bunch of seven inch rolls, so that wasn't gonna work for me. Also, it only does 720p opposed to 1080, like the Kodak device or the Wolverine Pro. What I ended up with was not the Wolverine Pro, but instead this Kodak device here. It supports up to nine inch reels and it will scan at 1080p. Now, if you're curious, the Wolverine Pro and this Kodak device unit look very similar and there are some slight mechanical differences between them, but ultimately they produce the same result. I chose the Kodak one because I kind of preferred the film guides here at the bottom over the Wolverine. Also, I was kind of familiar with the Kodak name. When you get one of these devices, it comes with um, an extra take-up reel, some adapters to convert those in case you have some of the smaller reels, uh, a USB cable for hooking it into your computer so you can copy the files off onto your PC, and a um, power cable and a cleaning cloth. What it does not provide to you is a standard SD card. Now, I would suggest minimally a four gig card or anything bigger, as a standard seven inch reel is gonna be about a two gig file when it's all done and processed. I I've been using this four gig card as I had it just laying around. Now the way the device works is you put the SD card in the back of the device and you load the film on the left side, almost like a normal projector. You then select whether you're gonna digitize an eight millimeter film or a super eight film with the flip of a switch on the front of the device. If the film does not track forward, you probably pick the wrong format. You'll then pop up the small cover and feed the film through the track where the backlight is located. I found it best to feed the film from the far left through the device while keeping pressure while I fed the film, as there are small tabs to help guide it across the light and hold it in place. I found that this works best instead of just trying to press the film into the little guides from the top. Then once you have it fed to the other side, you just close the cover and start the conversion. Then just wait a bit for the film to advance enough so that you can wind the wheel onto the take-up reel, which is going to take some time for it to process. Now, a reel of 400 foot film, which is about this size, a seven inch, uh, takes about 30 minutes to play normally. Uh, in this process of digitizing, it's going to take roughly four hours. What the digitizer will create for you is a high resolution 1728 by 1296, or a four to three ratio MPEG-4 video, which is ready to view on any PC. You just pull it off the memory card and you're good to go. Now the film does end up being recorded as 20 frames per second, which is not the normal frame rate for most eight millimeter or super eight film. Normally an eight millimeter film was shot at 16 frames a second and a super eight film was shot at 18 frames a second. In comparison, TVs and movies are generally filmed at 24 frames a second. The side effect of this is people in motion might move at speeds that don't quite look correct, but that's something that you can correct in most video editing software sometime later. For this video, I just wanted to share with you what you get with the device as its native output. Maybe in the future, I can share multiple ways to modify the output or how to edit it using different editing software. Now let's talk about the good parts that I found using this device. First, the price point. The price wise, the device is relatively cheap compared to sending the video out to a professional company. And to be honest, I think the quality of the video is going to be on par, if not better than some of them. If you watch my other video, you'll see I did look into outside companies and most of them provided 480p resolution videos, not 1080p like this device. 
And for a job the size of mine, the cheapest I would be able to get it done for is roughly around $2,000. The max was 11. So I saved myself a lot of money by doing it this way at home. And frankly, my family did not mind if things were not perfect. They just love seeing the old film movies. The other positive is, is the digitizing process is very straightforward. You basically load the reel, feed the film, and just wait. It can't get much easier than that. This is not a complicated device or process, so literally anyone can do this. Within the device, it does allow you to make adjustments to the digitizing process. So for example, if the film does not line up correctly, it allows you to fine tune the adjustments of the capture frame through an easy to use interface. It also allows you to adjust the exposure, the tint, and the sharpness of the image when it performs the capture. Here's a sample of some film I captured at three different sharpness levels. This is the highest setting of the sharpness and the middle and the lowest. My personal favorite is the lowest setting as it seems to soften the edges a little and get rid of the graininess. The beauty of having this device is if you don't like the result, there is no additional cost to convert it again. Just rescan it. Now, because it digitizes the images at high resolution, the quality is incredible. And because there is no manual focus, as long as the original film was in focus, the quality of the image you will get is going to look great. And one of the other things that I really liked about this device was the fact that it was not overly aggressive with the film. Some of this film is now almost 65 years old, and the last thing I want to do is have a device pull on it with gears and yank and tug the film. I found the device does a great job of gently guiding the film across the scanner, and if there is a problem, the film just kind of stops. It just gets stuck, which does happen periodically, but it'll just sort of sit there and wait for you to come back and check on it. Where my old school projector would be a little more aggressive with the film and at times damage it. I don't get that with this device. I also like the fact that this digitizer uses an LED light instead of a hot light bulb. So when the film does stop, it's not going to go burn a hole in it or melt the film like it does with my old projector. All of this means that I can have the flexibility to walk away from this thing and come back and check on it periodically. Basically start the process and let it go. Overall, this is a great device for getting your film converted and I feel is a great solution for frankly anyone, even this average Joe. Now, there are some issues that I want you to be aware of because everything is not perfect with this device. An issue I would run into occasionally with some of my film is the device's inability to detect the color correctly. This did not happen on all the film, so it must be something about each unique reel of film or how the device tries to detect the color. But as you watch this clip from Yellowstone, you'll see we start out with what looks like a nice green hillside, but as we pan up into the trees, the capture from the Kodak device turns things brown and then flips it back to green. Next to it is the same film captured using my projector and a camera so that you can see the difference. This was not the film or the person behind the camera, but instead the Kodak device converting the image. I would also get situations where the device would turn things blue, as you can see in this last sample. You could, of course, correct this with software after the fact, but we are getting into post-processing and I wanted to show you the raw output, not something I spent hours making it look perfect. These devices are not perfect and I wanted you to know that. One of the other issues I would run into was that on some reels where the film was joined with tape, it would just get stuck and you would need to give it a little tug for it to continue. Not a big deal, but just something you gotta watch for. Here in this time lapse, you'll see the reel stop and I just had to give it a little bit of help and it would start back up. This was due to the fact that the joining tape covered the tracking holes and the Kodak device just could not advance the film. The good news is, is this does not destroy the film. It just makes the conversion process take a little longer and you'll get a little pause. The last thing I wanted to mention is when you use the rewind function, like most old school technology, it does not know when it is fully rewound. So keep an eye on things as I did take my off it once and the film kind of wrapped around the extension arm. It didn't hurt the film because it's very gentle on it, but I did have to take some delicate time to unwrap my mess. It doesn't happen often, but I had a really full reel and the film must have slipped off. My overall opinion of this device is extremely positive. I personally spent months converting all of my movies using this method, listening to the tick in the background as it worked. And the overall price was great, given the quality and my other choices for converting the film. If I had to recommend how to do film conversion, I would definitely go with this Kodak device and use this method. I hope that you found this review useful. And if you think of anything you wanna know about the device or experience in converting the film, please leave me a comment below as I'll do my best to respond and I spent countless hours messing around with this thing. As always, thank you for watching. I will leave you with some small samples of film here at the end. And while I do that, 
If you have not seen any of my other videos of converting film or home movies, I will leave links to them here and here. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you again and catch you next time.